What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Today's lesson is open loop, closed loop. Uh, fuel systems. So I got some notes on my phone here because it's a lot to take in and I'll show you the sensors. Well two of the sensors and how they work. A good one and a bad one. Uh, so what is closed loop and open loop? And when does it start? When does it end? What sensors are used? So this goes for basically anything fuel injected, uh, motorcycles, cars, stuff like that. Um, in a nutshell, closed loop is where the engine operates with a feedback loop. So it's using all the sensors. Um, in an open loop mode, the engine doesn't listen to any, any kind of sensor at all. It just does its own thing. It doesn't read the voltage. It doesn't read the air fuel mixture, anything like that. Um, it just runs off a set of instructions based on where the throttle is at. That's the only thing. Um, the sensor in question that it mainly reads off of is called a lambda sensor, oxygen sensor. Sorry, get my drink out of the way here. Ugh. Allergies this morning. 75 degree weather, man. Uh, like I said, lambda sensor, also known as an oxygen sensor or air fuel ratio sensor. Uh, in closed loop mode, the engine listens to the lambda sensor to adjust the fuel air mixture. In open loop mode, it doesn't. Um, and these are, sorry, oxygen sensors. And you can see, if you look close, they're different. One will be post cat, one will be pre cat. And they have has a heater inside of it to kind of come up to operating temp, not operating temp, but so it'll get a correct reading. Uh, so how does the closed and open loop system work? Um, like I said, it's the oxygen sensor. So the point of a closed loop system is to get as close as possible to efficient air air fuel mixture. Um, the most important thing to understand about a closed loop combustion is that it's a compromise for fuel efficiency and environmental purposes. So basically it's just to get better fuel mileage, less emissions for emission states. Um, you know, a lot of fuel consumption puts out a lot of, you know, bad stuff in the atmosphere and that's where the cats come in. But if you're building an all out just race machine, you don't need a closed loop system at all. But you're going to use a lot of gas, but it's a race machine. So, uh, cars and motorcycles, they switch to closed loop mode when they're basically idling. Uh, this happens when they're idling after they've warmed up or you're at a low to mid throttle under 40% usually. When you operate at a constant speed, <clears throat> like constant load, constant throttle, the ECU switches to closed loop mode, like you're on cruise control. In the closed loop mode, the ECU will use the input from the lambda sensor, from this little guy right here, <clears throat> uh, it's, which is in the exhaust stream to determine the correct amount of fuel to inject into the engine. Uh, this way the ECU is able to adjust the air fuel mixture based on the actual result of the combustion. So when the lambda sensor reports the mixture is rich, obviously the ECU injects less fuel. And if it's you know, mixture is too lean, then it's going to inject more fuel. It's trying to lean out the mixture as much as possible without doing damage to your engine. And this is all computer and it happens so many times a second. So many. It's just constantly going. Um, so how does this little guy work? These little sensors. Well, like I said, it, air fuel mixture happens many times. Um, just the kind of a base model with some numbers. This is uh, how often fuel is combusted in your engine. And these are just base numbers. 3000 RPMs means 50 revolutions of the crank per second. 50 revolutions per second means 25 power strokes per second. Assuming a four stroke engine, which basically your cars are four stroke. 25 power strokes per second means 25 combustions on a single 50 combustion 
uh, on a single 50 combustions on a twin which is basically a motorcycle and 100 combustions on a four cylinder so if you got a v8 basically that's 200 combustion cycles you yeah uh, even though the fuel injection and combustion is happening hundreds of times a second, the Lambda sensor is an analog. It is not digital. It's an organic device. They're electrochemical. It's got zirconia element inside of it. Yes, the same zirconia with the fake diamond rings. It's the same thing. Um, but it's in a powder form inside here and it reacts to oxygen. It's basically a chemical reaction that's happening. Or, yeah, chemical reaction. Lots of oxygen in the exhaust stream will make the cell, um, will make the uh, sensor output a low voltage, like 0 0.2 volts. And little to no oxygen makes the higher, uh, makes higher voltages like 0 0.8 volts. Uh, lots of bots, blah, blah, blah. sorry guys, man. Lots of oxygen means the, f the fuel got fully burnt with the oxygen to spare. It's too lean. No oxygen, <clears throat> excuse me, means there wasn't enough oxygen to burn all the fuel. So it's running too rich. So these are reporting back to the ECM and it's saying, hey, add more fuel or take away fuel, depending on what the reading is or the voltage is. That's what the ECM is looking at is the voltage range. Because it's an organic device, it can't give as fast as feedback as a digital device would. So even with 100 firing events a second, you'd get far fewer feedback points a second, but still enough for your computer to operate. The other inputs that is in closed loop mode, um, just like in open loop move mode, it needs a bunch of other inputs as well. So the other inputs that the EC uses are the air, air flow into the manifold. The ambient air temperature, the engine block temperature, the air conditions with altitude and humidity, the engine RPMs, and the throttle position. And all these are gathering information and voltage all at one time, along with these, or if in closed loop, not those, or open loop, not those. Uh, open loop idling, low RPM, and changes of throttle. In open loop mode, the ECU doesn't care what these sensors are talking about. It doesn't care. The mixture's too rich, oh well. Here's your fuel. Basically to keep the engine running. In open loop mode, the injected fuel amount is pre-programmed by the information in the fuel map. So when you engineers build cars and they build the ECUs and all that stuff, they are pre-programmed with a fuel map inside there that the ECU runs off of when it's in open loop mode because it's not listening to the sensors. It's just dumping fuel in there um, like high idle, it's dumping fuel in there to keep the, the vehicle running. Um, just like in closed loop mode, the EC uses information from a whole bunch of sensors, including the airflow, the ambient air temp, engine block, air conditions, which is altitude and humidity, the RPMs, and the throttle position, and possibly other inputs, um, you know, timing, uh, advanced or retarded timing, stuff like that. It operates in open loop mode in these situations. Start up, warm up. The engine isn't trying to optimize for anything here other than warming up. That's it. Much like using a choke on an older engine. Pull the choke, less air, a lot of fuel, warms up the engine. Medium throttle to acceleration. The engine needs more fuel and isn't optimizing for efficiency at all. And deceleration, engine braking. The engine RPM isn't constant, even in throttle, it, even though the throttle is it might be held off. If you can actually set your car or motorcycle to always be in open loop mode, then um, I, I don't know why you'd want open loop, you dump in fuel all the time. Like I said, in open loop mode, the engine relies mostly on a fuel map to understand how much fuel to add to the engine. And it's just a, a table from RPMs to throttle position, engine temperature, air temperature, it's just like a chart that that it sees like ambient air temperature is this, engine temperature is this, I need this. The simplest and most common kind of fuel map relies on just two things, throttle and RPM. Basically throttle position and RPM. 
uh, changing between open loop and closed loop. Uh, standard configured engine with an ECU, they switch from closed loop to open loop automatically. You don't even know it does it. If you're idling at the, and the sensors are warm, you'll be in closed loop. The engine is trying to use as little fuel as possible. If you accelerate, the engine will be told, hey, the accelerator is on and switch to open loop. That way you can take off and it's not trying to regulate how much fuel is going in because you need fuel to move. Or if you go to pass a car cruising down the highway. The switch from closed loop to open loop is effectively instant. It's switched on and off like you flick a light switch. Uh, when conditions are stabilized, for example, if the throttle is returned to a low position and the RPM is constant, the ECU will switch back to closed loop. Um, the, the way the computer thinks about it is the fuel map, going back to the fuel map. Um, so there are some problems with switching between open and closed loop. Um, they, it's also described as poor fueling. And it's kind of, it's not really a complicated thing, but poor fueling um, is over aggressively switching to closed loop mode. They do, the manufacturers do this because they want to pass emissions regulations. So they have to keep combustion efficiency high. This means you might experience things like you're keeping constant speed on a flat surface and the throttle is nearly closed. Uh, your car may lurch or jerk. This is the engine switching to closed loop mode or switching between odes because it's confused. It doesn't know what to do. Uh, you have hesitation as you accelerate hard. Usually in the low to mid RPM range, this is the computer being hesitant to enter open loop. It's basically like, are you sure you want to do that? That's why some of these newer cars, you'll push on the throttle and you'll feel a lag. And that's basically the computer in closed loop going, oh crap, he pushed a throttle and he's still pushing the throttle. We're going to open loop. We need more fuel. They can be resolved by modifying the fuel map, sometimes the sensor, sometimes the car owner just eliminate the sensors altogether, which I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, we don't need to modify fuel maps or anything like that, unless you're building like a tune car or anything like that. So that's basically what's happening. So these things do go bad. As you can see, these are two different sensors. See the difference? You even have different colored plugs. So one's a post cap, one's a pre cap. Usually the dirty, dirty one is post, or excuse me, pre. And this one's almost new. It actually had a malfunction. The, uh, ele the element inside was bad. I had actually checked for power and ground. With this happen, it threw a code for a O2 sensor heater element, is what it was. But these things sit in your exhaust all the time. They get really hot. So they do fail, they get incorrect readings. And that is basically how open loop and closed loop system works. It's pretty common. It, it's, uh, so to retract open loop, it's not listening to it. These guys are just sitting in the exhaust, trying to report to the ECM, the ECM's ignoring it, I don't need you. Closed loop, it's listening to what these guys are saying. So. I hope that helps you. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.